overdue video but i'm uploading it anyway it was the 4th of march when i started planning my itinerary for this trip that was three days before the actual trip i made sure to match my bookings from journeys to airbnb stays to the actual things that i wanted to do it was going to be a four day trip my first ever solo travel bullet planning was a great help in managing my schedule i included the things that i wanted to wear each day of the trip to make packing a little easier for me the power of the internet was also a lifesaver some of my friends were planning a day trip to a beautiful city near the place that i was planning to go to and so I decided to join them. On the day of the departure, the famous British weather was showing off. It snowed on the way in the beginning of March. It was almost springtime and it snowed. Luckily, I came prepared. I brought some extra coats and underclothes to layer and fight the cold. It was a three-hour journey from London via coach and that brings us to the first destination, the beautiful city of Bath. We arrived Bath at almost midday. The city was beautiful, the architectures were astonishing and were very well preserved. We were eager to start wandering around Bath but we were quite hungry and had our brunch first at a nice local restaurant. <laughs> Say hi! My friends were planning to go back to London the same day and so I will be left alone at the end of the day, sadly. I still had my things with me and so I checked in first to my Airbnb and left them. Therefore, I can freely go around the city without my things being a nuisance. It required a bus ride to get to the location. I would say the city was small and the attractions were pretty much walkable. However, the residential area which includes my Airbnb was on a higher area that somehow looks like a hill and would not be conducive to walking. You'll find my Airbnb a very very nice place. It's too good for its price and the owner was kind. They had a cat which is really cute. This is the Royal Crescent. It is a row of houses laid out in a somehow sweeping crescent shape in the city of Bath. It is a famous filming location and I believe 
Bridgerton and Jane Austen's Persuasion were filmed here, which is pretty cool. We then went next to this famous historical location that was very vital to the start of the civilization of this city. It is a museum called the Roman Baths, and it is an ancient temple which is surprisingly very well preserved. This ruin was a sacred place, center of worship used by Celts, where they worshipped a goddess named Salus Minerva. As a place being a natural hot spring, Romans used to cleanse and bathe here as well. I would say the place is a must-go if you're planning to go to Bath. It's full of history and it's just interesting to see how people from distant past used to live. And if you're wondering, can you take a bath in the museum's hot spring? The answer is no. You can't touch it nor it is recommended for you to drink the water here for it is untreated. Is it really a trip to Bath if you hadn't tried the famous Sally Lung Bun? This eating house is famous for their bun and also happens to be the oldest house in Bath. It's a small place to eat and have tea. Their bun was hands down so good in my opinion. I'm still trying to imitate their cinnamon toast here at home. It was it was it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> Okay, so this next stop, I would say, is one of the faces of Bath. This beautiful spot is at the Pulteney Bridge. It's so beautiful there in person. It looks so majestic and it's just beautiful. My friends and I then went to a pub near the coach terminal. We had a few drinks and this is me trying out vodka with tonic water. And as you can see from my face, I didn't really like the tonic water much. It was quite bitter for my liking. They waited here for their coach scheduled departure back to London, which means I am bound to be left alone in this place. I am currently in my Airbnb. It's quite nice. It's a really nice place. Simple, but nice. I wonder how old this bed is. Look at it. I think this is vintage. So I'm going to take a shower and go to sleep because I want to wake up early tomorrow. The next day was my departure going to the next destination. I was going to Chippenham. It's near the village that I was planning to visit and I was going to stay there for three days and two nights. During this time, I had a lot to think about. How do I spend my remaining hours in Bath? I swear I planned this, but there are times in which things don't usually go as planned. This is one of those. The next day, it snowed. I was planning to go to a beautiful location. It's a bridge at a national park in Bath. Because of the snow, it's automatically off the list. I was also planning to go to a spa, but I didn't want to spend my time there worrying about the train instead of relaxing. So I ended up going to a nice cafe, a restaurant to have my brunch, and just prayed that my train doesn't get cancelled.
Luckily, my train didn't get cancelled. It was still snowing when I arrived to Chippenham. The town was quiet and small, and there is a significant difference with the number of people in public. I was alone in the bus during my journey. When I got off, there was a lot of walking, the weather wasn't helping, and the snow was not even a pretty one. It's more of a transition from snow to rain. The air was cold and freezing and the sky was pouring a combination of snow and rain which made a muddy and sticky snow, which is horrible. It was a bad day, a fall of expectation from the kind of day that I was expecting it to be. I had a problem ordering food online, so I had a bar of chocolate and tea for dinner instead, which is very unhealthy. When I was showering, the water suddenly turned cold and it didn't produce hot water until the next day. All of these series of unfortunate events made me question why I was there in the first place. I had a breakdown wishing I was home instead, but a day always ends when you sleep. And so I just slept it out. It's up to you to decide if you're going to bring yesterday's bad day on today. And on that day, I decided to leave yesterday's misfortune in the past. I continued with my plan, made my coffee, and just enjoyed the upcoming day. I think I might have done it the wrong way. I used both cappuccino and all I got is the espresso. I think they should have been together. Cappuccino and then espresso. So tomorrow all I have is the espresso that's why it's bland so bland anyway yeah i'm going to get ready because i think i'm gonna be late for the bus This beautiful place is at the Castle Coombe. It's a small, well-preserved village nestled in the beauty of nature. It felt like the place came straight out of a fairy tale book. The untouched beauty of the neighborhood near the river, the fog that was embracing the trees, the grass that was blanketed with thin, delicate snow, the walls of a castle-like manor house being hugged by crawling vines, a cold atmosphere and the soft drizzles brought by the clouds. I felt at ease. It was just quiet. It was just peace. That day I proved that it doesn't have to be sunny to have a perfect day. You don't have to be with someone to feel joy. I felt like a child enjoying the rain. It was priceless.
The truth is, I was sad when I saw the weather forecast for that day. But going there in not so sunny day was a good idea. They said the tourists usually search around spring and summertime. And so that not so nice weather that I experienced that day was a blessing in disguise. It was really quiet and peaceful. It felt like a dream, a fairy tale. I feel like I keep on saying that this place looks like it came straight out of a fairy tale book or a movie. It's because it really did came out from one. Do you remember Stardust? The side of the wall where the mortals lived was filmed at this very village. A lot of other movies were also filmed here, making it popular to tourists. It was just a pain to go here when you're commuting though. The buses were very limited, and after 5 p.m., there won't be any more public transport that you can catch to go back to the city center. I feel like if I had a car, it would have been better, but it was a nice little adventure for me, and I wouldn't change a thing about it. This is crab meat soup, I think. Corn, crab and corn soup. Oh, this is a lot. This is sweet and sour chicken. And I bought two rice, two egg rice, which is quite a lot because it says there that it's small. So I should have just bought one. Anyway, I bought two. I'm going to put that in the fridge. I'm going to eat the. I'm going to eat it now because I'm hungry. Alam mo yung bubble gum na raspberry? Alam mo May bubble gum kasi na parang pula eh. Ganun yung last one. Alam mo yung bilog na bubble gum? Hindi siya matamis masyado. Alam mo yung bilog na bubble gum? Yung pula. Ganun.
This was the last day of my little getaway and the last stop was the Laycock Abbey. There was so many things to see there and I can see myself going back there in the future. It was a nice museum. Remember the Harry Potter series? Hogwarts hallway was filmed here. When Harry was a baby and his parents were killed, their house was also here. A lot of other films were also filmed here, such as Downton Abbey, The White Princess, Pride and Prejudice, and so much more. It was a really beautiful and interesting location. The Abbey was amazing. It felt like I was teleported back in the 1800s, the Victorian era. The Abbey was very unique for its time. There was this gothic room that had lots of sculpted pieces and there was a beautiful elegant dancing fire which left me in awe. Even though the rooms opened was very limited that day, it was still a nice experience. Most importantly, this was where photography was born. The place was owned by Henry Fox Talbot, the father of photography. It was so amazing because the first ever photograph was taken here and I saw the window on the picture personally. Can you imagine? The process of preserving memory through photographs started here. Plus, the staffs were all so nice. I will definitely go back. The only sad thing that ever happened that day was that I missed my coach. It was so sad and tiring. I had to book the train which was five times the price of the coach that I missed. But thankfully I got home safely. Though I had to face something very terrifying. It was the London tube. It was my first time using it so I had no idea how it works. I just followed my guts and the flow of the people and thankfully I arrived home. I've never been more relieved when I saw the bus that I usually catch. I would say even though it didn't perfectly went as planned, it was a nice experience added to my memories. Will I do it again? Definitely. Probably not in the near future but it's a definite yes. If you're planning to go on a solo trip for the first time, I would suggest start small and do your research about the place where you're planning to go to. Do not expect much. Let the memory write itself. It won't be wise expecting to experience pure joy alone. You may feel different emotions such as excitement, sadness, fear, and or peace. And that's okay. Embrace it, for an adventure filled with joy alone is bland. Thank you for watching, I'm sending you my love.